Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In the shadows of history lies a city known for its secrets and seductions, Babylon. In the ways of Babylon, Apostle Michael Orokpo exposes the hidden strategies of this ancient world system. Learn how the spirit of Babylon still influences today's society, pulling many away from God. Discover the subtle traps and deceptions that lead believers astray. Break free from Babylon's grip and walk in divine wisdom and truth. Unveiling the truth about the ways of Babylon and guiding you to freedom. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. We give you glory, we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name. We are going to pray one prayer tonight. And then we'll go home and trust God to help us. Sit down for a moment. You know, <laughs> there are topics that when they are being treated a lot of Christians cannot interact with them because they are actually high matters in the kingdom you know when we are talking about healing when we are talking about prosperity when we are talking about God wants to lift people everybody can interact with that because that's at the level of our needs but we begin to talk about kingdom that borders on the needs of God very few Christians have traveled deep enough to articulate those needs. And that is why dominion is far-fetched from our Christian practice. One of the undoing of the church of today is that we are not raising men who can conquer systems and territories. That's the burden. That's one of the burdens. And the reason is because dominion is not part of our syllabus. God gave us five mandates, began to talk to me about those mandates. He said the first mandate is an apostolic mandate. And I'll take time to do a teaching on all of that here. But if you study the word apostle, there are four major things that stands out. Four. Number one is that apostles are navigators. In fact, that word is coined from the word a rare admirer one who leads a fleet to a harbor that's why you see that most apostles are missionaries and by implication it gives them authority to move the body of Christ from one dispensation to another and that's why every time new dispensations are born apostolic voices emerge it is part of the apostolic spirit the second thing that defines an apostolic mandate is the ability to embody the burdens of the kingdom and to communicate it to a generation that's why apostles are sent men apostolos they carry a burden and that's why the messages of apostles are not completely from bible studies they actually come from dealings and encounters because you don't have a message you you are not an apostle if you have not seen jesus that one is the basic and anybody who is an apostle knows it's not an argument. Even Paul said, have I not seen the Lord? Because you must have encounters to be able to articulate the heartbeat of the Father part time. And God must have carried you through processes so that you are able to communicate the texture of witness that God wants a generation to handle. So apostolic people carry burdens of the kingdom. That's why they are called sent ones. 
the third thing that defines an apostolic mandate is the ability to break territories and to open new frontiers so paul speaking about the apostles said they confessed not because they are superior to the other offices but the wiring is that when they come into a system or a territory they can break grounds that's why apostles plant churches because if you go to a place you can shift the dark cloud and establish a new government it is the territories that are broken that the other ministers can come to labor in it's an apostolic spirit so every time you see apostles they are planting churches they are taking over territories they are doing invasions it's part of the ordination and that's what they did in the acts of the apostles the church in ephesus the church in philippi the church in the house of Rhoda. they are that's their work they come into dark places they shift the cloud they break the ground so that the work of god can find expression and finally apostles are burdened with the burden to raise people to maturity until we all come to the knowledge of the fullness of the measure of the stature of christ so apostles are not necessarily troubled with the fact that people have needs your needs are met but more importantly you have to grow to a point where god can entrust you with mandates so our burden is to raise sons men that reflect christ and men that bear the the, the burdens of the kingdom so god can send them god can trust them that that's why the messages sometimes appear to be corrosive is to break you out of your comfort zone so that you can seek him that dwells in the midst of the coast of fire you must hear the whispers of zion for yourself until you too become part of the army that god is raising it's an apostolic mandate and that's the first mandate god gave us but god gave us another mandate a soul winning mandate he sent us into the world to bring men into the kingdom that's why you see us laboring night and day all kinds of crusades and outreaches in fact currently we are on a project called project five million souls everybody who has come here and has connected to what we are doing and has worked with us for at least six months you know that you must have gone out for missions either when we herald the whole church to go for missions or when we send individuals out as we empower them because we have a soul winning mandate to bring men into the kingdom as we yet disciple them the third mandate god gave us is a revival mandate because there are many in church but they are not on fire they are lukewarm the voice of god has become scarce it's been long they had encounters and you know even the high priest can come to a point where the voice of god becomes scarce the bible spoke concerning eli in first samuel chapter 3 said the voice of god was cast in those days and men no longer had open visions so people no longer knew the movements of the spirit and even those who are in church it has become a religious thing let's just come on sunday this is our family church but what god is doing is beyond my family attend this church what god is doing is that he's bringing the kingdom of heaven to the earth and he needs foot soldiers to steward it and for you to do that you must be able to hear the voice of god you must be able to withstand the compromise that your generation your world wants you to fall into you must be able to exercise dominion over demons it's not something that you come and watch your pastor do a miracle service or from sunday to sunday it's something that you too must participate in so we be a generation must be awoken to their ordination in god and that's why god has given us a message to set men on fire so when we preach it doesn't even matter the subject we are talking about we can be talking about law we can be talking about kingdom finance we can be talking about prayer but there is a sting that awakens your altar until you too become begins to burn like a flame it's a mandate and there are angels mobilized to see that this mandate is advanced and number four god gave us a mandate of signs and wonders because there are many people who are burdened with all kinds of affliction he has given us the revelation of the gospel and he has taught us some things that helps us crack through some of the issues that men battle with as touching their afflictions finally god gave us a dominion mandate and so when he was teaching tonight one of the things he was touching is what borders on dominion and you see when you start dealing with the subject of dominion one thing you discover is that physical territories are actually dumping grounds for spirit cities every manifestation you see in the geographical location 
is actually reflecting a reality in the spirit so if you don't know what is happening in the spirit city you can't exercise dominion on ground and that's why he was talking about babylon so what i will do is that i will take out time to do a teaching on the 12 spirit cities that are captured in scripture 12 of them the last one is jerusalem that's zion we'll talk about zion but before we talk about zion we need to study the bible because most of the cities where you saw that israel was held in captivity they reflected dimensions in the spirit and if you study the bible carefully you are going to begin to find that the bible re recognizes some of those territories that you thought were physical territories to be spirit cities for example if you study isaiah 19 you'll know that egypt is not <laughs> what you see in the northern part of africa egypt is a spirit city and there is the spirit of egypt and if you don't understand the spirit of egypt you will not know why some people are in perpetual slavery because the spirit of egypt is a spirit that enslaves men and there are dynamics that defines that spirit and there is a way to break out of egypt you come out of egypt and egypt has to come out of you that's where a whole lot of syllables about wilderness when we are talking about wilderness experience we are trying to show you how to deal with egypt and when we are talking about the rod the rod of god is also an instrument for dealing with egypt because you need the rod of god to destroy egypt and come out but you need wilderness for egypt to come out of you but you see many christians don't know process that's why when we talk process process it's not because god wants you to suffer it's to squeeze egypt out of your heart because if egypt remains there you can come out of egypt but you'll be in slavery and so god is taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey but you'll be looking for garlic and cucumber because you have been indoctrinated for more than 400 years and you have become a slave not because of where you are but because of what is inside you and then you talk about babylon you know babylon is controlled by two spirits the first spirit that rules babylon is the spirit of nimrod that's the spirit of invention that's the spirit of globalization that's the spirit of greatness that is why every time you find people who are slaves of satan the devil always bargains with them about greatness i can give you something that will make you a star and they begin to compromise that's what led them to build babel it's the spirit of nimrod you come up with inventions that turn people away from god look at the inventions that are coming today you you don't know you don't know what is happening you think all the smartphones they are creating now listen the holy ghost is the excellent spirit there are many christians that have led invention in fact we led and pioneered inventions but i'm telling you that that gate can also be hijacked by the spirit of nimrod and when they invent things the idea is to make you turn away from god so that those things can become your god because the idea behind nimrod is to make invention become your god so that idolatry becomes your way of life it's a spirit that controls babylon and the second spirit that rules babylon is the spirit of jezebel and the spirit of jezebel is the spirit of seduction is the spirit of mixture and is the spirit of corruption so if you are not taught how to overcome spirit cities when you now go out to represent jesus you will now meet things inventions that we will, will be used to bargain your allegiance opportunities doors of greatness god makes men great oh. he said the lord gave his word great was the company of them that published it if you serve god you'll be great i've not called the seed of jacob to seek me in vain but god is not the only one that makes great and so when nimrod the spirit of nimrod is at work it will give you opportunity for greatness but you must compromise if compromise is the basis for greatness know that you are in babylon it doesn't matter where you are in the physical geography in the spiritual geography you are already in babylon and then if corruption and seduction becomes an operating system the only way you find pleasure happiness and relevance is when you are perverting the ordinances of god or you are working in corruption know that you are you are you are a citizen of babylon you are not yet in zion so a generation must be raised to know how to fight spirit cities now let me show you a few things he said write them down and keep them in your notes when we visit this subject we will look at it again he was showing us the ways of babylon the ways and there are a few things he highlighted 
write these things down study around it and pray for god to help you because when nimrod and jezebel gang up they create a territory called babylon in the spirit and everybody who is a citizen of babylon must live this way the first is that you will be compelled to speak one language that's why even in church today they are forcing us to speak the language of the world you know when some of us show up and we start fighting some of these things people think you are just trying to be difficult they want us to dance the way they dance in the club they want us to use words that they use in the gutters on the street to show that we have understanding it's a spiritual they will compare you to pick up slangs from the gutters you don't even know what it means and you'll find christian christians pastors musicians using those slangs and using all of those language because when you start speaking their language you adopt their identity and that language can may not be what you verbalize it can even be a way of dressing that's why we tell our sisters here who think until you dress naked you are not beautiful is babylon no. it's a language the way a generation dresses is a language is babylon that's why when god wanted to destroy babel he scattered their language because if they speak one language they will want to find god in things or themselves and they will neglect the living god so from dressing to talking to lifestyle all of those things are a language it gives you an identity so that when the world sees you they will not be able to tell the difference that's what pastor frank was trying to bring to us number two way of babylon is that your focus is not the will of god is greatness there are many people who are doing ministry today they don't care what god says they don't care what god's agenda is so long as they feel relevant according to the standard of the world that's fine so you find people doing things dislocated from destiny an intercessor wants to be an evangelist online an evangelist wants to be a politician an apostle who should be in the mission field wants to become people are just dislocated yes an apostle is a psalmist because anyone that looks as if it will give you visibility the next thing you have become a new creature and you are doing it so a man who should be praying on the altar you'll find him online opening platform he's trying to to be known is is babylon and the problem is that you may succeed in it but the more you succeed the more you discover you have wandered away from god somebody who should be a singer come and sing he said no singing is not working i want to open my church somebody who should be opening churches in the village because god equipping to be a missionary say no the village is not working me too i'm coming to city center and he comes to city center in three months he has borrowed money from all the borrowing platforms that is in that city after three years he carries his bag and run away because he's not wired to function there and before he realizes it satan will mess him up when you serve god he will make you great but greatness is not your pursuit that's why it's called babylon the great he will suggest greatness to you as your goal our goal is not to become great our goal is to fulfill the will of god when our our time is over if we do it god can make us great but even if he doesn't we will survive babylon is an intelligence i'm telling you i'm not telling you to become a mediocre you know we advocate for excellence influence here because it's a necessary tool for advancing kingdom but that is not our priority everything that greatness looks like is a tool for advancing kingdom number three way of babylon is a change of identity anything that puts you under pressure to hide your identity in christ so that you are accepted or you are given an opportunity is not god is babylon babylon will force it down your throat somebody told the story a woman wanted her son to go for a all these holiday camps and she was so troubled in fact she called some pastors to pray with her because she was afraid that if the son goes there and they discover she is a christian they were going to be taunting him frustrating him so the son went for the camp and came back the woman was happy trying to find out what happened hope your confidence hope you have not been they didn't insult you they didn't do anything they saw say no 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 don't worry nobody noticed i was a christian he adopted the identity of the world 
and manage it perfectly. Some of you saying, ha, ah, here, if we go to your office and we call you man of God, people will turn, who? Man of God. Are you a man of God? Because they will be shocked that you are a Christian. I'm telling you, that's why I tell you, what we are talking about here is not just to come to tongue and touch and speak in tongues. The guy said, oh king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. He said, even if you make the fire seven times hotter, we will not bow. We have a generation of people who compromise even when they are not tempted. So when we come to church, all of us are pious like St. Patrick, St. Thomas Aquinas. But the moment we go to the office, we are the same. <laughs> Somebody said, he told the parable about Lagos. He said on Sunday, Lagos is dry because almost everybody is in church. But if you come back on Monday, if your glass is wind down, they will steal your phone. He said, where do these people go to on Sunday? Because we are, we become like them. See, don't be a Lagosian because you live in Lagos. Don't be a Jamaican because you live in Jamaica. Don't be a Nigerian because you live in Nigeria. Be a citizen of Zion, wherever you find yourself. If your identity is altered, you are a Babylonian. The fourth thing that defines the way of Babylon is mixture. Eating food, giving to idols. It's not everything we consume. Oh. I was preaching the other day. I told our people here. They said they are Christians. They want encounters. They want to burn for God. Carry their phones. A secular song that litters everywhere. Any beat you play, before they sing the song, they will tell you the artist. As they are eating the word of God, that's how they are eating all the secular musicians. Even the ones that are, are outrightly honoring idols. Christians sing them. When you ask them, they say, is it a sing to sing a song? They are not kingdom oriented. Daniel and his friends said, we will not eat that which is sacrificed to idols. They said, they called it defilement. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. They refused. The songs you are singing, they came from spirits. They were inspired. You think they just sang because they were gifted? Why do you sing some songs here and you start praying in tongues? Because those songs come from all tasks that, that generate energies of the spirit. Who told you that you sing some song, you will not start feeling like committing immorality? Who told you that you will not sing some song and your fire won't go down? Who told you men originate songs? Songs come from the spirit realm. They are vibrations of their soul. When they release it, we catch it and we communicate it. They don't come from our realm. Because those sounds are transport medium. There are songs you sing and you meet God. And there are songs you sing you meet the devil. Because those songs are vehicle to bring you there. But when people are Babylonians, they don't know what to eat. Your diet must be sanitized. We don't eat everything, sir. We don't participate in every meal. Only the things served from the Holy of Holies are the things we allow to enter our soul and our spirit. That's how we fight Babylon. The way they do me, do me, and somebody is singing and dancing and dancing and dancing. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. If they choke, if they choke, and you hear Christian talking. When I hear those things, I say, which one is this? They say, no, they started saying it some days ago. Even some, they pick from. The other day, I was asking my wife. I said, how do they know when these things come? That means they are tuned to those frequencies. The moment anyone shows up, you start hearing it everywhere. I, I say, this thing I'm hearing, what is it? They say, eh, that's the rainy slang. And Christians are consuming it every day. I'm not saying you won't hear it. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. You become a Babylonian when you begin to consume it. When they throw it at you, repel it. This one can't enter my soul. My diet is selected. I'm careful what I eat. Glory to God. They refuse to eat food given to idols. Number five way of Babylon is bowing to men. When a system is built, even if it's called church, if at the end of the day they go, it's for a man to become a god. There's a problem. And that is why most of our churches today are Babylonian systems. It's all about general overseer. Even the message can be preached until Papa is quoted 10, 20 times. Because you must say something that makes Papa feel that you are loyal. It's Babylonian system. Because the same way 
Nebuchadnezzar built a graven image. Some of us, a large cathedral has made us, has become our graven image. That's why you see, we kill ourselves today to build certain structures. All of that is packaging. I know the place of order. I know the place of excellence. I understand the necessity of building befitting places where people can walk, come to worship God. But we are not called to worship men or things. The moment the emphasis become about a man, if that man is around, the man is so big that God is obscured. Then you know that what that place has become Babylon. No matter what they are saying, forget it. A spirit, another spirit has taken over. There's a place for honor, there's a place for respect, there's a place for regard. But men cannot take the place of God. But unfortunately, most of the institutions of the world today is all about men. It's not about God. It's Babylon. And these things are so subtle that if you don't know it, you will never know. And you will not know why after 30 years of thinking you are serving God, you are lukewarm, you backslide, and you become worse than you were. See what Jesus told the Pharisees. He said, you travel land and sea to make a proselyte. That means a young disciple. He said, but you make him twice the son of hell than he was when you met him. We pick people, we say we have won them to the kingdom. At the end of the day, they become our slaves and worshippers. Tell people to pray, they can't pray. But they can come and wait for man of God for 10 hours. Something is wrong. It's Babylon. It's Babylon. Number six. Manipulation and witchcraft. You know the way Babylon works? It will bully you to worship it. That's why when the boys refused, they cast them into a furnace that was 10 times hotter. The system we are building today, if you dare the man of God, you are finished. He will kill you. I'm telling you, it's not a joke. First, they will preach messages that will make you become, you will be obscured. They, they will destroy your life and ministry with sermons. The sermon will make you worse than Judas Iscariot so that nobody has anything to do with you. And every power they have to shut you down from their colleagues to their resources, they will do it until you are so frustrated and useless. It's either you come back begging like a useless person or you are wasted and they will use you as an example for others. It's Babylon. They will throw you into a furnace that is seven times hotter because you refuse to bow. I'm telling you what we have today. Why do you think many young voices don't rise? And even the ones who rise are compelled to worship people. Because of Babylon. Daniel thrown into the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego thrown into fire that was seven times hotter. And if you are not taught how to survive Babylon, you will not know that it's in the fire that Jesus appears. And you will bow before you are thrown in. Listen, listen, honor men, respect men, serve anybody God places you under. Never come under the temptation of worshiping men. Whatever happens to you, receive it. Die serving God. You will be a gallant soldier. And trust me, everybody who stood their ground, when they are in the fire, Jesus appears. The ones who fail are the ones who compromise. And this is not just church, politics. Go and check some of our brothers who are serving the auger. You will serve for six years. All of a sudden, cases start coming up. That's when you are arrogant. That's when you are a thief. Because the auger will make sure you are not settled. And at the end of the day, if it's compared to settle you, it will settle you in a way that you will never prosper. They will give you a shop at the end of the town. <laughs> you see somebody served for seven years, he is settled, he can't become. Because the whole idea of the settlement is to relegate you to nowhere. Because they always see you as a competition. Is Babylon. Dominated the church. Dominated every system. We must fight these things. If we will fulfill God's agenda and serve his purpose. I will take time to do a thorough teaching on all of the spirit cities. Because there are many there is the Roman Empire. There is the Assyrian Empire. There is the Ottoman Empire. See, you don't know the systems that govern this world. 
The reason you have not risen, this is why. You don't conquer Egypt, you don't conquer Babylon, you don't conquer Assyria. It's a system that war you until you are really done. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.